What's up, guys? Ryan from Elevate Cyber here. In this video, I'm going to break down uh, Hydra brute forcing web forms and a little bit more uh, from my free pen testing notes. If you don't have them already, uh, check out the link in the description. You can get them absolutely for free. Uh, I'll just go ahead and email them over to you uh, if you follow the link down there. And so this is kind of what you're getting with it. Uh, there's a huge number of categories. Like I said, this was built up over the course of about four to five years. And uh, yeah, you see this particular note back from 2018. Uh, but this one could be kind of uh, confusing to understand just looking at the notes here. And I know some people have been asking about uh, if I could clarify some of these. So I want to go ahead and help you guys out here because this is a really useful one, especially on OSCP. A lot of times you need to brute like a, uh, a web login form. So say you, you're pen testing a site and you see a login page and uh, maybe you already know what the, what the username is or you already know the password. You want to do a password spray attack against a user list or something like that. This is where using Hydra uh, is pretty ideal. Uh, you can also brute force uh, various protocols like SSH and um, you know FTP and different stuff like that. So this is pretty straightforward here how to do that. You know, you just do dash L, give it a login list for like a usernames, right? A, a file kind of like here, here's an example, right? Dash L, say you have a list of users and a users.txt file, dash P, and you have a, uh, a list of different passwords uh, saved as creds.txt or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then you say the protocol and whack, whack, give it the IP address. And it's as simple as that to run it against protocols. But let's really hone in on how you would use this to brute force a, a login page that you find on the internet, right, on a website. Well, the way you would do that is similar thing. If you don't want to pass it a user list, you can do a lowercase l and just tell it what user you want to brute force. In this case, a user named John is what we're brute forcing. And same thing here, if you only had one password, say you're doing a password spray attack, you might have like a capital L and a list, a file with a list of potential usernames. And then you would have a lowercase p and the specific password you wanted to test all those usernames against. That's known as a password spray attack. But in this case, let's just say we know the user's John. Now we're just trying to brute force his password, a pretty standard scenario here. Uh, now, you want to make sure that whatever web form you're brute, uh, brute forcing is not going to have a password lockout in this case because that will kind of thwart your plans there, right? You won't be able to actually take uh, carry out this attack. But if that's not going on, then you can kind of run it like uh, as follows here. The capital P, give it the... Here I'm using the rockyou.txt, a very classic password list, uh, really huge file too, by the way. So just know if you're going to run this over the internet, it could take a pretty significant amount of time. But then I'm going to say the IP address of the server. In this case, we have that as an example. And say HTTP post form to tell it to do a uh, post request. Because most of the time when you have login pages on the internet, they're going to be uh, post requests. And so you want it to post the form and then you tell it uh, if it's not at the root of the uh, of the website, right? You, you want to tell it what page. In this case, the name of the page, the login page was called checklogin.php. And I'll put a colon here and there's a couple of fields I want. I want to figure out what is the username field called and what is the password field called. And to do that, you can basically just inspect the element. And uh, I was hoping I could do that on this page, but I guess not. So like, for example, right, you, you inspect the element. You would inspect the element where the username goes and you would just look at what that's called. You know what, let's, let's go to a page really quick. Hack the box, for example, right? So let's say we're gonna try and log in to hack the box, right? You got these two fields here, email and password. Now, by the way, guys, don't don't try to hack, hack the box doing this or don't even try to hack like a, do anything malicious with what I'm teaching you here. This is just purely for educational purposes, of course. Um, but yeah, you'll see like this has a name, this field. Uh, uh, yeah, here you go. Value Name equals email, right? This is called email. And then let's see what this password field's called. It's just called password, see? So basically that's the information that you're going to need. And so... Let's just take the example of hack the box, right? You would say, uh, instead of username equals user, you would say email equals 
user with all, with the caps here and the and those special characters where they are, and then password because it was called password right password equals pass right, and also you need to find out what the login button is called. Uh, in this case, we just would need to inspect this element right here. Here, this is an easier way to do it. Uh, in this case, it is called login. So uh, that part would be the same. Login equals login. And then you need to find out the fail condition and have F equal to that, right? So, so that way, uh, Hydra will know what happens in the condition that it fails. And so as to not dox myself, I just went ahead and submitted an invalid thing on the uh, on my own here. And here you see, whenever there's a fail condition that comes up, it just says a generic error message. These credentials do not match our records. So that should be somewhere in the actual uh, HTML, no, like in the response, right? So, yep, you see this in the response here. Like, if we were logging this request on, like, burp or something, we could see that in the HTML response as well. But uh, this phrase here will play every single time you do an invalid login. So that will be our fail condition that we'll put in in here, okay? And uh, we'll clo close out the quotes. I'm going to do dash capital V for verbose, get a little bit more info. I I'm pretty sure that's what that flag's for off the top of my head. Could be wrong there. But uh, that's pretty much that. It's kind of complicated, but that's how it works, basically. And uh, you can use this to also brute force the basic auth. It follows the format of username, colon, password. And uh, you can also use it uh, in this way as well with a word list and uh, port IP address on a get request pass of the URI. So there's different ways that you can do it. Now, one thing that I found pretty interesting as well is that you can... Uh, you can proxy pretty much any tool. Uh, I believe I have a video on that. Uh, if I can remember to link it, I will. Uh, HTTP proxy, uh, hydrate proxy HTTP, sorry. Uh, and you can give it your local address and then the port that you're listening on with burp. And in that way, you can actually intercept all of your stuff. And you can actually filter out the 400 errors, like the, you know, 404s, 403s, and all of those. And, uh, and that way you only see the successful login attempts. So you have a few options here, but really what I wanted to get across is breaking down this long command. <clears throat> it might be hard to understand just out of the box, right? So hopefully that helped clarify some stuff. Let me know if there's still any questions down in the section uh, below and uh, definitely get this, uh, this free uh, pen testing notes if you haven't already picked it up. And, uh, yeah, if you are interested in more videos on, you know, basically what you would need to know for OSCP, maybe you're going for that, or maybe you're just trying to grow your pen testing skills, uh, check out, uh, that playlist over here, uh, next, and I will see you right over there. Thanks for watching.